Yo, what's up guys? My name's Sam. I'm a photographer and filmmaker based here in Malaysia. And today I want to talk about something really, really exciting. I have been waiting for this camera. Well, okay, not, not really for forever, but I've been waiting for this camera for quite a long time. Uh, it's, it's crazy to actually be holding it in my hands. Uh, this is the Canon EOS 1DX Mark III. Honestly, it's incredibly surreal to actually own this piece of equipment in my hands right now. So I've had this camera for a couple of weeks now. Uh, unfortunately, I got it around the time when this whole COVID-19 thing started to blow up. So quarantine, can't really go out. I haven't got much experience shooting with this camera. Uh, but today I want to talk about a few reasons why I chose this camera specifically and a quick discussion on how you should go about when you want to upgrade your equipment. But of course, let's do a quick unboxing video first. Okay, so welcome back, unboxing done. And I just wanna say that first off, I am so blessed to be able to afford something like this. Uh, I worked really, 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 really hard uh, for this camera. I saved up a lot of money. I haven't, I haven't gone out to really enjoy myself because you know I, I saved up. I specifically chose to not spend money on expenses, on expensive food and things like that. And I put everything into savings as well as saving up for this specific camera. And I've been saving up ever since the camera got, uh, was announced in a rumor. I think that was like somewhere last year in 2019, I can't even remember, but I started saving up then and there and I worked my ass off. And it's just, it's just a really, it's like a really special feeling when you've saved up for something and you finally buy it. You know, it's not the same as like just going out to spend on a whim, but you made a conscious decision to save up certain things uh, and to cut down on certain things just to get something that you want. I'm not gonna lie, it is a very, very pricey camera. Uh, but one thing I do believe in is that if you want something, regardless if it's expensive camera or not, or expensive lens, if you save up the money, if you're responsible with your finances, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't buy it even if it's not your target market, which I will talk about a little bit uh, a little bit later. So I'm very, 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 very happy, very, very blessed and fortunate to be able to uh, afford, afford the camera. And <laughs> you know, I, until today, I can't believe I actually put down the money for it. So a little bit of reasons why I chose the 1DX. Now, I was actually contemplating between this and the C200. I think the C200 is a fantastic camera. I've shot with it a couple of times. I love the images coming out of it. The ergonomics, everything about the camera just fits very well. The only real downside for it, for me, was that it's only a video camera. Yes, I understand, you know what, if you're a video guy, of course you will buy it. But I am a photographer and a filmmaker. I'm not either one exclusively. And so when I choose my equipment, I can't just choose something that's only very good at one thing. I have to I have to get something that's a little bit more versatile and that fits both the filmmaking and the photography needs. And so between this uh, and the C200, obviously the 1DX fits, uh, fits what I need the most because around they're around the same price, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, so I chose the 1DX instead. So a little bit of context, I also own the R and the 5D Mark IV and these are fantastic cameras, don't get me wrong. There was nothing wrong with them and really, if I did not buy the 1DX Mark III, like, I could still survive with these two cameras, uh, hands down. However, the one thing that I needed was I was looking to get a third backup camera. Uh, the reason why is that I've been getting a, a lot of work. So, and because of the frequency of work I was doing, I wanted to get a third camera as a backup 
or at least keep one of my other two current cameras as a backup just in case something happens. It's because I don't want to be caught in a situation where I don't have a camera or a camera gets stolen or it gets lost or it's broken or something like that. I want to be able to have at least a backup plan uh, in case anything goes wrong. The other reason why I chose uh, specifically to get the 1DX is, is reliability. Honestly, like, if there is one thing that's the most important thing to me in a camera, it's reliability. And that is, I know that if I were to pick this camera up, this 1DX up, anywhere I take it to, it will work. You know, it's going to work regardless of the situation, regardless of the, the weather, the temperature and things like that. I just want a camera that's reliable because I work professionally as a photographer and filmmaker. So I can't just have something that's a little bit you know, wishy-washy that might work or might not work depending on the situation that I'm in. I'm not very comfortable with that and that's why I only choose pro-level cameras because, once again, reliability is there. So one thing that's very important to me alongside reliability is high ISO performance. Now, this is probably the second in my list and the main reason why is because I shoot in very conditions. I shoot events, weddings, things like that, all kinds of like crazy, crazy situations. And one of the main reasons why I constantly prefer upgrading my cameras is because I can keep pushing my high ISOs as much as I can, uh, as much as I want to. If let's say I need a really fast shutter speed in a, in a very dim area, but my high ISO performance isn't good, I, I can't really have a faster shutter speed. So, but if I can shoot clean at let's say 10,000 ISO, I can have a relatively faster shutter speed to freeze action if I choose to. It's all about me being in control of the situation that I want and I know that my gear is not going to weigh me down in terms of image quality and things like that. I understand people have been shooting with 10 year old cameras but you know the camera tech improves every single time a camera comes out and that's one of the reasons why I personally prefer upgrading to the newest camera if I can financially afford it. Uh, one thing that I also chose why I chose this camera is something that I think a lot of people don't really talk about and that is how you feel about a certain piece of equipment. Um, there are certain pieces of equipment that when you see, it just inspires you to go out and shoot. It inspires you to do something, you know, it inspires you to, to just create something and it's kind of a trivial thing to speak about but when you go through it, it's a lot different and that's why personally I do like getting new equipment because every piece of new equipment just encourages me to shoot. While it's not something that's like a deal breaker or it's like, oh, if I don't have the newest thing, I won't go and shoot. It's just like, it's just sometimes that push to try something new, even, even on jobs. You know, when you have, when you're shooting with a camera for so long, uh, sometimes it can be so familiar that you don't really want to step out of your comfort zone. Uh, and jumping off that is another reason why I think anybody should get a camera is that if you like the camera, you should buy it. If you like the 1DX and you can afford it, don't get me wrong, you need to be able to afford it and not put yourself into bankruptcy just because you want the camera. But if you can and you really like it, I don't see the problem with somebody buying it. I know there was one argument somebody told me, but you don't shoot spots and yeah, I don't shoot spots. I don't need 16 or 20 frames per second. But if you look at the 1DX as only a sports camera, I think you are devaluing what the camera really is. I think like this is really, yes, it is, it is mainly for sports, but it's so much more than that. It can be, it can be used to shoot anything and be reli as reliable as possible. And for me, it's that everything else that uh, attracts me to the 1DX. I think the way the 1DX looks, it looks is so, it's, it's such a beautiful camera to use, even though like most cameras are very industrial looking. Uh, I like big bodies, I like a uh, battery grip and things like that. I like chunky, chunky DSLRs to hold. And that's why I like it. And that's why I chose the 1DX and that's why I bought it. It's not some, it's not just the other practical reasons that I said, but because it's something that makes me happy when I choose it. And that's, and that's should, I feel, should be one of the reasons why anybody chooses a specific camera. I do look at the 1DX as an investment uh, or at least a, a short-term investment because I know that if I buy this camera now and I sell it off, let's say, in the next two to three years to upgrade to the next uh, whatever model that comes out, be the mirrorless or whatever, 
I know that the One DX isn't going to lose its value as much. So if I know how to make sure take care of the camera, I don't abuse it. I use it, but of course I don't abuse it. Uh, I know that I will be able to not lose as much money if I choose to sell it off. And that really only happens with higher end equipment. And that's another thing from a business perspective uh, why I chose this. So those are really just the reasons why I chose the One DX. It's not really anything fundamentally exciting. It's just that I, I like the camera and it fits the needs that I'm looking for. It fits both the vo video and photo needs. It's a reliable camera that I can trust. And that's all I need from a camera, you know? That's all I want from a camera. And now I wanna talk a little bit about how you should think uh, when you're talking about looking to upgrade your equipment. Uh, the first things first is obviously, I, I, I think the most important thing is always your budget. How much money do you have? Not just saying how much money you have for the camera, but how much money do you have in your savings? If you are a company, if you are a freelancer, if, you're, if you, you run your own business, can you afford to buy this camera and still survive uh, in the real world? Can you, do you have enough savings to give yourself a buffer? Because once you do, then I think you can consider it's time to upgrade. Now, first, obviously, I understand that you can pay back through multiple jobs, but sometimes it's that when you spend that amount of money at that specific time, you are you don't have cash. You know, like for example, this COVID-19 thing. If this COVID-19 thing came about earlier, I probably wouldn't have bought the camera yet. I would have saved up just in case, but then again, I do have savings in case anything happens. So you, as a freelancer, as a business owner, you always got to look out for the unexpected things. And before you upgrade, ask yourself, do you have the money to save? You know, do you have the money to survive? And the next thing obviously is that when you're looking to upgrade to a new piece of equipment, you need to look at the other things that make it work. For example, the One DX has different batteries from the 5D and EOS R. It has new CF Express cards, which is really, really expensive cards. And then suddenly certain things like, let's say if I have a smaller gimbal, I might not be able to use the One DX on that gimbal. So you have to keep in mind your ecosystem as well. You might want to get that C200 or that newest camera, but if it doesn't fit into the current equipment or space that you own, you might need to upgrade more things, not just your camera. And can you afford that as well, you know? Can you afford the other accessories that you need to make the camera work? Upgrading your equipment goes without saying that if you need, if you feel like you're lacking in certain things, so let's say your camera breaks or your camera is getting old, uh, or you're you're not getting the look that you you want anymore from the lenses that you own, yes, you do need to look at upgrading. But at the same time, is can you survive with what you're you having now? Can you continue with what you're doing now? And if you need, let's say, that camera or that lens, or you want that camera or you want that lens, but you actually really need lights, you know? You need, we all need lights for, for the work that we do, photography or video included. And if you don't have the lights, maybe you need to channel your funds not into a new camera or lens, but into support equipment, to lighting, to audio and things like that. So when you're looking at upgrading your next piece of gear, always look at in totality of everything that you own and which one needs to be upgraded first. Let's be honest, all cameras are around the same. Most lenses, a little bit around the same if like f1.4 versus like let's say an f2.8. While you can see the difference, in really the differences can be quite negligible. Nobody really shoots wide open at 1.4 all the time for video or photo. And perhaps a flash or a light might be a better option for you. So it's looking at what you own in totality before you decide that specific piece to upgrade. And I think obviously when you're looking to upgrade, I think uh, it's, it's good to do a lot of research and like, okay, this, this works for this, this works for that. But once again, why one of the reasons I chose the One DX is because I like it, you know? And I think when you're looking to upgrade things, whilst it's nice, well, it's important to be practical, but at the same time, when you're buying something, you're buying it for yourself, really. You're not saying that, oh, I need this so that my clients will notice. Yes, for certain for certain jobs, yes, you might you might need specific kind of equipment. But for the most part, most clients won't be able to tell the difference between, let's say, a 1DX Mark III or an EOS R. You know, it's the same to them. And really, that's why when you're upgrading equipment, it's for you. If that piece of equipment or that laptop or that piece of tech makes you happy and you know that you will be happier shooting with it, I do not see any problem with that and really buying, upgrading, you should sometimes be able to look at what you really want and 
buy it because it in the end it's your money not not whatever people say that oh you don't you don't you you shouldn't buy this camera because you're not its target market so what if you can afford it you like you like it and you have the money to spare buy it you know that that's about it that, that that's really about what partially what upgrading gear is about it's satisfying that need inside you and not just the external what external factors for work so yeah so those are a couple of reasons why i chose the 1dx as well as some of the reasons or some of the things that you should be looking out for when you're looking to upgrade to the next piece of equipment uh if any questions about this unfortunately i can't do much test because i can't even go out the house um, but if any questions about the camera or if any questions about upgrading gear and things like that, do drop me a comment or drop me a message on Instagram. I'll be more than ha happy to help you. And I will see you. Uh, well, I hope to see the real world outside after this whole COVID-19 thing break, uh, <laughs> dies down and stuff like that. So uh, thank you so much again. And I will see you in the next one.